All right. We are back here. I'm Scott Picard with uh, the Real Estate World podcast from uh, Verde Real Estate Group and Verde Property Management here in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul, reporting live from the bunker here in Minnetonka. Uh, right now, the world is, um, the world is uh, a little upside down, and we're trying to restore a little order to the chaos, if possible, and yeah, be one of those guiding lights for folks here. Uh, today, we have a special guest, as you know, people are well aware, uh, landlords and uh, property management are, is, is something that has been getting a lot of press right now. And of course, Matt doesn't turn his phone off. Uh, <laughs> hey, this is live broadcast here, yeah, folks. We're, we're on it. We're on it. Serious stuff. No, but you know, they're, they're, it, the world's gone a little crazy right now, and people are looking for some guidance and we're hoping to provide uh some order in the chaos right now and help um you know individuals landlords business owners you know really anybody who's looking for uh some something to latch on to uh and you know a lifeboat if you will and we are going to be that lifeboat anywhere we can right now and, and try to help as many people as possible so matt's here today to help uh explain some of the recent changes that governor waltz uh, three really three things that Governor Waltz put in his executive order as they re, uh, apply to uh, rental property owners or landlords. Is that a good way of describing it, Matt? Yeah, yeah, I would say that. Um, so it was on March 23rd. But but hold on, Matt. Tell tell people again who you are. You're Matt Engel, and what do you do? Right on. So my name's Matt Engel. I'm an attorney. I've been a lawyer for 19 years now. Um, been representing property manager, small business, basically anything real estate related. Also do a lot of small business law, everything related to it. Uh, the last few years, uh, I've been doing a lot of eviction work. So uh, the majority of my business has been dealing uh, with problem tenants uh, in all aspects, not just evictions, but helping landlords navigate any issues or problems they might have uh, with respect to dealing with tenants. Uh, obviously, when, when uh, when Governor Walls uh, is making some of these orders, trying to protect us, uh, increase our safety, you know, move move this peak uh, down the road, as they say, buy us some time. Obviously, that has effect on uh, all of us, but uh, particularly from a business standpoint, uh, landlords, um, because if a tenant can't go to work and they can't earn money, uh, they're not going to get paid rent. Just like if we can't go to work and pay our mortgage and do different things uh, or the landlords, they have to pay their mortgages too on all their properties. So it, it's, it's going to create a very interesting situation uh, down the road. And we don't even know when that's going to start, but there's some important things he's done recently that have a huge impact on landlords. All right, great. And you know, and I, 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 I we joked prior to coming on live here and about the, the fact that you're really the last guy people want to call. Right. right. And, you know, usually, and I, and I advise, you know, people, you know, I'm a landlord, right. But it doesn't mean I don't care about the tenants and I don't have empathy. In, in fact, we do just about everything possible to make an accommodation, uh, a meeting of the minds, including up to even letting tenants vacate the premises without um, fear of any reprisals or, you know, uh, repercussions after the fact like you know no, no landlord really wants to go to housing court i don't believe there might be some twisted ones out there that want to and um you know i might know i might know a couple now that i think about it but but really i mean you know the goal here isn't to um to to throw people out of their homes because you know right now particularly there's a lot of help that i'm looking trying to assemble a list for tenants right in order to help them stay in their homes but that being said uh there is going to be a case where someone will need to file an eviction, whether it be for lack of rent payment or behavior or something, you know, the drug right. dealer or whatever. And Matt, tell us what those changes are. Yeah. So basically, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, people generally don't want to get the lawyer involved because, because that, at that point, everything's gone south and you can't fix the problem yourself and you need to bring me in to help fix the problem. And generally that's what I do. So again, up until that point, I would say with the tenant communication is the key. If the tenant is staying in communication with you and at least giving you a plan or something they can do, you're going to be more lenient and understanding as a landlord. It's when they quit returning calls, text messages, emails that you have no idea that landlords end up having to take action. Um, so with this, uh, this executive order, 
if anyone wants to read Walls's executive orders, you just go to mn.gov and just do a search for Walls executive orders and you'll get the whole list of them, uh, the text and what, when they were signed and what they say. The specific one related to landlords and evictions uh, is number 20-14 and he signed it on March 23rd. And in essence, the title that he gave to it, um, suspending evictions and writs of recovery during the COVID-19 peacetime emergency. So the reality is that this order is ongoing. There's no ending date or deadline like there was with some of these other orders. This is indefinite until he lifts it. Um, so when I'm gonna get into some of these specifics here, the important thing that we don't know is when does he feel it's gonna be safe that we're all back to a normal where people are back to work. So at this point, you know, he's kind of set this timeline like with going back to school and whatnot for May 4th. Like he thinks maybe we'll, our kids will be able to go back to school on May 5th. Well, with the evictions, he's also gonna look at it as when do people get to, to go back to work? Um, and how much time am I gonna give people to make a little financial recovery before I'm gonna let evictions start again? And I don't know what that's, I don't know how long that's gonna be. We don't know how the mortgage industry is gonna to respond to this. We don't know uh, if there's gonna be any sort of forbearance type periods. All of this is gonna to play together as to when he lifts this peacetime emergency order on the evictions. Um, there's two things related to this. So he basically put a stop to the evictions, uh, to termination of leases and no writs of recovery to be executed or served by the sheriff. Now it's not only an eviction for non-payment of rent. That's the most common eviction I do. Someone's behind on rent and you're filing for non-payment. Uh, but there are many other reasons an eviction gets filed, and he stopped essentially all but a couple of those reasons. So I'll tell you which evictions can't be filed, and I'll tell you which evictions can be filed during this time. So we cannot file evictions for uh, after termination of lease. So you, uh, Scott gave someone notice to vacate, you know, in uh, February. It says be out on March 31. Tenant doesn't leave. They're now a holdover we can't file an eviction for holdover anymore. Um, they really? In the place. Number two, uh, after um, termination of a redemption period. So for example, someone was in a contract for deed and they failed to make their payments. So part of a contract for deed cancellation is you, give a, you have to give a 60 day period to make that's the redemption period. If that's the case, you can't file an eviction after the redemption period. You can't file a, an eviction after a foreclosure uh, here's the other two kind of big ones, in my opinion. The fourth one, if there's been a breach of lease. Uh, breach of lease could be anything from loud parties, um, disturbing your neighbors, anything that violates a term of your lease. It says we can't bring an eviction for breach of lease. Now, there's a tiny exception there, and that's one of the other ones I'll get to when we can file an eviction. And then the last one is we can file an eviction for non-payment of rent. So the five areas are those. The most two common are non-payment of rent and breach of lease. It doesn't mean the tenant doesn't owe you the rent. They still owe, the obligation still carries. It's just that we don't have any teeth. There's no repercussions right now for a tenant not to pay, to, to pay their rent. Um, there's no motivation. I shouldn't say there isn't a motivation. If they don't pay, they know they're not gonna get evicted. So now their motivation to pay is dropped. And so if you've got tenants who are on the edge already as to whether they pay or pay on time or have the money. I think there's going to be a significant number. And I've talked to some of my property management clients are already taking calls from, I don't know, a lot of tenants saying I lost my job and I don't have the money to pay my rent in April. Um, you know, like you had said, some of the recommendations are communication with the tenant, tell them, uh, you know, pay what they can, et cetera, try to work with them. And that's all we can try to do. But from the landlord's perspective, we can't file any of these cases. Um, yeah, you can't file yet, right? When the order's lifted, people can file at right. that time. Right. And so, you know, I'm kind of expecting, obviously, a flood of cases once this thing gets lifted, right? Because there's going to be, uh, I don't even know what, what you, can, you can give a guess at what your percentage of, of uh, tenants will be that won't pay because of this. But let's just say it's uh, if you've got 15 properties, perhaps five of them don't pay. And so of all my clients, if there's going to be an, an uh, whether it's uh, three times as many evictions as normal, 
you know, that, that uh, there's going to be a huge flood in the courts when this thing is lifted and everyone's going to have to get in line. So even though we might be able to file everything on the same day, they can't certainly hear all the evictions timely. So there's going to be some uh, relaxation of the timing rules, in my opinion, when it comes to once the thing is lifted, tenants that haven't paid the rent. Um, at that point, it's like, well, how soon will they be able to schedule all these? I don't know the answer. Right. Uh, well, and one thing I'm advising, um, like properties we manage, like we've got a list of resources available, like, you know, state unemployment insurance you know, is one. The federal government is now, I believe it passed a short time ago, $1,200 for every adult who, who will file a tax return in 2018. And, and you know, again, as, as of 2.06 PM central daylight time on March 27th, 2020, this is what I know. I don't know that, you know, that could change. Um, some of these things, they're what I knew this morning that could have changed since this afternoon. Uh, the, there, there, is, there is financial assistance coming for some folks. Unemployment, I know they've, you know, the federal government has given a, very liberal interpretation of you know what right. unemployment is right now, and I know we won't want to get into that in the in the context of this phone call uh, or Zoom meeting. Um, well, I think just briefly, the, initially when when Walls his one of his first con press conferences was he was going to open up the unemployment insurance, make sure people's applications get processed quickly, um, and I think uh, we're up to. And again, it's it's over 150,000 new applications since this thing started. Um, and their 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 goal was to get checks out within a week. I heard that at some point. But again, the the unemployment only applies if you were a W-2 employee, if you were a contractor. You know, so he's been talking about the barbers and the salon, and like who rent who rent a chair, the more independent contractors and your small business owners. Um, we don't get unemployment insurance. So he was looking at a way to open it up to people like us and that I don't, I haven't seen that's happened yet. Anyway. There's something in the show Shit's Creek. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I'm, I'm in season uh, two. Yeah. I remember when he, he was the guy who was the business owner and he's like, he went to get unemployment and they said, you can't get it. He's like, well, no, I've, I'm sure I've paid like hundreds of thousands of dollars of insurance. Why can't I get the benefit? They're like, well, you were the business owner. Yeah. You, you so right paid now it. We, we don't get those benefits. No, the reality was, is that, okay, we're going to open it up to 750 bucks a week. Um, and, and I think in Minnesota, it was 20, 26 weeks, perhaps. Um, and then I think the feds were going to throw on, or maybe it was 39. One way or another, the feds were going to throw on an extra 13 weeks so that they could bring it out even farther. Uh, so again, it's, it's up to perhaps 39 weeks of $750 a week. So initially my thought was, well, that's the money that's going to be available to people to pay their rent and pay their mortgages. So you don't have to take this step of saying we can't file evictions anymore because why are you putting $3,000 a month into someone's pocket for unemployment and then tell them they don't have to pay rent on top of it. But I mean, both, both of those things came down. So that's just where we're at. Uh, you, we can't do the evictions. The unemployment is there. We'll see what happens. They're supposed to know more today on whether these contractors and business owners are going to be able to get into that or not. Obviously, he talked about the SBA loan program. Uh, they're going to try to give give liberally these SBA loans that have little or no interest, and they may forgive half the amount. So there's some other things they're trying to do. Yeah, I don't want to get off into the weeds too far, but I will just say as an editorial comment, um, yeah, most landlords, uh, you know, and I will say in Minnesota, I'm going to go out on a limb and say most, that means 50.001% or more, are not these fat cats laying around in loincloths being fed dates by uh, the palace servants. You know, these are people who are, who could be laid off, you know, sitting, you know, in line at, at the grocery store with you, who are looking at that rent check as a difference between them paying the mortgage on that property, paying the utilities, the taxes and stuff. And this could have a, a real snowballing effect that I don't believe Governor Waltz has fully thought out. Or if he has, he is catering to one group and not, you know, at the, at the expense of another one. And that, again, that is not to say that uh, I, I, I don't have empathy. I do for tenants. I believe that, you know, again, we're taking a proactive measure. Like there are, you know, going to be resources I'm looking for extra resources to help people right now mm -hmm. because 
it's to me, it's the just and, and, and right thing to do. And uh, do I benefit? Of course, you know, I, I do, but you know, I'm the small business owner that like, I don't get unemployment. I, you know, it, I, I have to make payroll and I know there's lots of other small business owners in the restaurant industry who are, who are already out of business. They might not be officially out of business, but they're out of business right? because of this. So yeah, uh, everyone take a step back. Everyone. And uh, you know, we're just, we're trying to do the best we can in trying to help people plan for this. So again, yep. the key thing to know is it's not that the tenants don't owe you rent. It's just that we can't file if they don't pay, we can't file for breach and those other things that we had talked about. The well, other- the one, and, and one thing, I'm sorry, Matt, the holdover thing is, is, is kind of scary too, because March 31st is over yonder. Mm-hmm. If someone holds over and you got someone moving in, what do you do? Uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, you're right. The person moving in is going to be stuck. They could have nowhere to go. Um, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, these are the unintended consequences of taking huge actions that have far more reaching implications than what you think about. But I get it. You know, it's like, you can't have, we can't have, his, his reasoning is in the order. You don't want people out. We don't want them moving in with other families. We don't want the hundred people congregating in the hallway at the Hennepin County Government Center on the morning of eviction court, those sorts of things. You know what? I get all that. Um, to go to your kind of uh, holdover thing, uh, the second thing is there's no termination of leases. So even if someone is at, you know, um, right now, let's just say you, you, uh, you want to give your full 30 day notice to vacate under someone's lease and you want to give that by the end of March, you can't send that out now that says you need to vacate at the end of April. You can't send out a notice to terminate uh, or to, or, or non-renewal during this time period. So can, it, can the tenant, what's that? But the tenant can, right? The tenant can, correct. Uh, and then the last thing too is uh, there were a number of cases where we had, you know, when you go through the eviction, you know, if, if the tenant isn't cooperating um, and they don't make their payments or whatever, all, our ultimate goal is to get what's called a writ of recovery for the sheriff. And the sheriff is the only one who can come out, remove the tenants and allow you to change the locks. So the third aspect of his order is that even if there were any writs out there that have already been issued, where you've already even scheduled the lockout, they've all been stopped. So the sheriff no longer can post a writ, serve a writ, do a lockout, do the physical eviction, which is kind of the end, the end part of, of an eviction process, right? So he stopped new filings. He stopped you from giving a notice of termination and the sheriff can't do their job anymore either with respect to the evictions. Hmm. So those are all the aspects. So, you know, you ask your, as a landlord, a property manage, uh, property management company, or as a uh, investment property owner, what do we do in the meantime? Well, I guess you hope, you hope that as many tenants as possible pay. Uh, you try to stay in communication with them, try to give them ideas, try to give them links to resources, like you had said, to get these help, to get the unemployment, uh, and to have them pay as much as they can, so you're not left holding a huge bag at the end. Uh, and trying to deal with it. Or like you had said, your, your mortgage payment is still due as a rental property owner on that property, whether they pay rent or not, you're digging into your pocket to, to make that mortgage payment. Utilities, the, you know, I'm sure the city, yeah. the municipalities and the governor um, wants you to keep paying the water and trash bill, right? Yeah. R- regardless of whether or not people are paying your rent, uh, the insurance, um, the, uh, the, 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 the property taxes I checked today. Um, I didn't see any tax holiday no. from, uh, you know, <laughs> so, you know, but, you know, as, as, you know, anecdotally, I will say the people who prior to prioritize rent payment and the people that don't are typically the same people every month. And that there's probably, there, there are people who have reached out. I know even to us and I'm like, you know, here's some resources, um, like, let's just, you know, everyone take a deep breath. You know, this is going to pass. This too shall pass. You know, right. you know, even in, in, in the worst of scenarios that I've seen, you know, this isn't going to last forever. Right. right. And, you know, I'm not happy about it. Like people like you, you have to balance your, your emotions too. Right. You know, there's a, there's a point where you're too cavalier about it. Right. And then there's also a point where you've, you've, you've been too, uh, uh, too comatose about it, right? Or, you're, or you've been uh, uh, too uh, paralyzed by it, right? There's, uh, where's that balance? Nobody really knows, right? And, and, and nobody, can really, nobody can really tell you what that is. Right. 
So the last couple of things, remember I said there were a couple of exceptions to things yes. in file. Uh, those two exceptions are number one, if a tenant is doing something that endangers someone else's safety or other residences, uh, that's an example of an emergency eviction that we could file. Part of filing an emergency eviction is you got to submit what's called an affidavit along with your eviction action complaint. And the, if, uh, the affidavit is basically a sworn statement of the victim or of the property owner saying, this is the crazy stuff the tenant is doing, threatening, endangering the safety of others, and they will continue to hear those types of evictions. And then the last one is, um, you know, in most Minnesota leases, you heard of the crime-free addendum. That's basically the list of criminal activities that allows you to bring an eviction under its 504B171. Uh, those evictions, they will continue to hear as well. So those are the two exceptions to the eviction halt. Um, and it's like anything else in the courts. The only cases that are proceeding in court in general are if there's immediate safety concerns, um, issues like that, that they continue to hear, domestic abuse, restraining orders, those are all still going forward. So with all of those, people say, well, what, what do we do in the meantime? Well, as a landlord or as a property owner, um, you know, you can take the time to, you know, look at your lease, make sure that's in order. If you've been meaning to have a lease review, uh, if you've been meaning to look at uh, doing your business through an LLC, uh, getting the liability protection, how does that work? Uh, we can do all of those things for you. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've reviewed thousands of leases uh, and obviously been through the Minnesota Landlord Tenant Statute um, a thousand times as well. So I know what to look for. I know what's essential. And, and so if you want, if you've been wanting to get those things done, obviously it's a good time for me. I've got extra time now um, to, to work on those issues. So, you know, if anyone wants to talk about how do I operate an LLC in my rental property business? What benefits is it to me? How does it protect my personal assets? Those are all things we can talk about and look at in the meantime as well. Well, and I, I like how you said that too, because it's a great segue. Like this is a great time for, like, it's not all doom and gloom. Like I think that so much of this is how you, um, what your mindset is and how you approach it. Like it's a great time for, for, for people to look at what's our crisis management plan. What is, you know, and, and if you have one property, you know, we still, let's talk about a crisis management plan. This is a black swan event. I don't think six months ago, anybody would have predicted this, you know, maybe somebody who is really like masochistic, masochistic and pessimistic said, you know, this exact thing was going to happen. There's no way, but you know, the circumstances, what it is, it's how you decide to deal with it. And it's a great opportunity, Matt, like you said, look at an LLC. If that's not your, how you're currently operating, look at your current LLC, um, your current business structure, you know, maybe there's room for improvement there. Look at your lease, yeah. you know, like, you know, are, you know, is your lease in compliance with the current statutes? You know, some or, people. Or, or rates on your loans on your properties. Like it's, it's, uh, uh, and this is going to be more in your court. If you can improve your rates on your different properties and maybe some refis to save, I mean, it's a, um, I know rates are really good right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's a great time to, you know, and we have a, a question, Chad, Nathaniel, as a landlord, are, are we, do we get a reprieve from payments if tenants do not pay? No, the, the short answer, the, the, the oversimplification is the answer is no. no. If the tenants don't pay, the, it's like having the property vacant. Right. Um, maybe someone can negotiate something with their bank. That is a- up to The individual lender. I've heard of some individual lenders offering a few month forbearance which basically means they add those payments to the back end of your loan. And that's going to be up to each individual lender. Uh, there's no, there's no mandate from any government agency that that happens at this point. Right. There's some stuff with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that I'm aware of. I'm not going to speak of it now because I don't know it enough to repeat it um, intelligently, but you know, many landlords have commercial loans, you know, where they're not, they're not bound to the Fannie Mae Freddie Mac guidelines anyhow. Um, and again, there's no guarantee on any of this stuff. It's, it's, and, and, and I'll go off on a little bit of a tangent, like the small business administration loans. If these are truly loans for the restaurant owner who has no income coming in and is get, and could be shuttered for three to six months, who knows? Um, that's a risky proposition for that person too, right. you know? So like just to say, Hey, you, you can get access to these loans. <sighs> 
you know, like, so I'm going to take out a $50,000 loans and hope that I can open up in six months. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a crazy, scary time for people. And, you know, I'm certainly not going to be one who's going to, going to spread fear. I think, you know, let's all take a deep breath. Let's, uh, let's look at the situation as it stands in front of us and let's, um, let's, let's try to make the best of it. Yeah. And like you said, refocus, what's your attitude? Like for me, like I said, evictions were 90% of my business, you know, but I've been doing a lot of different things for 19 years. I've done bankruptcies in the past. I've done family law and divorce. I'm just going to have to dust those things off. Um, so not only, you know, I understand the, my evictions will pick up again, but what am I going to do for six months, if not longer before that happens? And I just got to, you know, you got to figure it out, find something else to do. And I think we're all, we're all dealing with that. So. Um, right. Yeah. It's, it's um, not, it's not, it's not one special class of person who has to deal with this right now. It's everybody's dealing right. with it. And we all have our own, uh, our own set of challenges every day. And, you know, to, to a hammer, everything's a nail. I think that we can look at obstacles as the raw materials for the opportunity, whatever obstacles in front of you, how can I convert that into the opportunity? That's not my own. That's Dan Sullivan. Mm -hmm. I will give him credit. A mentor of mine. Um, um, let's see. One more question, Matt. Thank you. Is it best to do an LLC with Matt or should we do it? Uh, legal zoom. Uh, you know, Chad, I'm always a fan of hiring professionals. I, I think Matt, the phone call is free, right? Yeah, free consultation. Uh, we talk through all the issues. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, uh, obviously I'm not a huge fan of legal zoom. I've, I've, you know, I think from a consumer standpoint, it might seem cheaper and quicker and easier. Uh, but a lot of the legal zoom things I've seen tend to not be specific enough to what you're trying to do. Uh, and there, there's a lot of tax planning and aspects of choosing your entity. Is there going to be one owner, two owner? I can't tell you how many people have gone to LegalZoom. They put them and their spouse on as the owners of the LLC, not knowing that, oh, when you have two owners in an LLC instead of one, I've now triggered a partnership tax return, which is going to cost me an extra $2,500 a year and having to do a 1065 partnership return with a K-1 where I could have just done a single member LLC and have everything go through a schedule on my 1040 and saved a bunch of money and costs that way. So there's a lot of unintended consequences that you might not know about. It's not going to break your bank to form an LLC. I mean, you're going to get everything done for less than a grand, if not cheaper than that. Um, so again, if you're looking at starting a business and you're already into it, I would agree with you. It pays to have, pays to have someone you can pick up and call, ask questions and know you're doing it right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's, that's my approach. I know other people might have a different one, but it has always been like, Matt, you've been invaluable to, to myself and my team. So I, again, I, you've helped us. So I have no problem promoting you because you've been awesome. So, and, and that's just it. I don't promote people who I think um, are tools, right. Who are just in it for a quick buck or trying to screw people over. Cause that's not what I do. Like I plan on being here 20 years and I, I, and the only way, you know, the best way to be here in 20 years, well, ho hopefully we're retired, right? But what, whatever, somewhere between now and 20 years from now, um, or maybe not, you know, we love what we do, but it is to, is word of mouth and building our business that way. And Chad, I really appreciate the questions. Those are awesome. Matt, um, just real quick, I know your phone number, it's in your, your name here on the Zoom, but any, uh, what's the best way to say it out loud? Because this will be going out to a podcast where they can't see us. Um, how do people get a hold of you? So yeah, the, the phone number again is posted 612-373-7060. Or you can go to my website, uh, theinglefirm.com. And it's just T-H-E-E-N-G-E-L-F-I-R-M.com. Awesome. And I'm Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group, 612-600-8888. Uh, thank you, everyone who tuned in live on Facebook. Thank you, Matt. This has been awesome. I learned something. Believe it or not, people. Uh, and I appreciate your time and look forward to doing it again soon. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. See ya.